In electrical science, we're going to have to learn how to rearrange certain mathematical formulas in order to find the value that we're looking for. So let's just look at a simple formula. A plus B equals C. That's called an equation. Why is it called an equation? Because we have an equals sign. Lots of electrical formula are going to be with an equal sign, they're going to be equations. And all that means is if we can imagine that the equal sign is like a set of scales, it's a balance. That side has to equal this side. And the rules for transposition, transposing a formula is to rearrange it to find a different value. The value that you're trying to find is called the subject. So in this formula, A plus B equals C, C is the subject of the formula. And if we want to rearrange this formula to try and find B, then the rules are whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we must do to the other side to keep the balance. So if we were to add something on this side, we have to add something on this side to keep the balance. If we subtract something on this side, then we subtract the same on that side to keep it balanced. It must always be balanced. We'll look at multiplication and division in a few moments. If I want to make B the subject of this formula, I need to get rid of A. I want B on its own. So how can we get rid of A? Well, let's just take it away. A minus A. Whatever I do to one side of the formula, I must do to the other to keep the balance. So I have to minus A off this side as well. C minus A. Now, A minus A just cancels out. And I'm left with B equals C minus A. B equals C minus A. Let me just go back to that now. I just want to run it through with some numbers. A plus B equals C. Let's make A1 and B2. 1 plus 2 equals 3. What I just did in that previous example was we, we looked for B on its own. B was the subject. So it's like making 2 the subject. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Now you know just by looking at the numbers it's a lot easier that 2 equals 3 minus 1. How do I get that 2 on its own? In transposition we do the same. If I minus the 1 there, I have to minus 1 there. What I do to one side of the equation, I do to the other side to keep the balance. 1 minus 1 is nothing. 2 equals 3 minus 1. Let's look at a different formula. Let's look at Ohm's law. I equals V over R. Current equals volts divided by resistance. We have a fraction now. The last formula was A plus B equals C. This one we've now got a division here. V divided by R. So what do we do here? What we'll say, let's say we want to make V the subject. We want to get V on its own. From the rules of transposition, whatever we do to one side of the formula, we must do to the other. If I want to get V on its own, I need to get rid of that R. How can I do that? If I multiply this side by R, I have to multiply the other side by R. These R's now cancel out and I'm left with V on its own. I times R equals V. We like to express formula with the subjects on the left hand side. So when we've worked it through to get the value we're looking for, we just change that around so that the subject is on the left. So V equals I times R. Now we tend to express Ohm's law as V equals I R we lose the times sign, we lose the multiplication sign. 
So we can assume in formula that when we see values like this without a sign in between them, you can assume that it's a multiplication, it's a times. We can assume that there is a little times in there, which is quite important when it comes to transposing. Let's go a little bit more complicated now. The formula for inductive reactants, if you all remember, is XL equals 2 pi FL. A bit more of a complicated formula, but still quite easy to transpose if we just stick to the rules of transposition. If I say, said to you, let's make L the subject of the formula, what do we have to do? We've got to get rid of the 2 pi F in order to get L on its own. We have to get rid of that. So how can we do that? We need to be able to cancel that out. So let's divide this side by 2 pi F. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other to keep the balance. XL therefore has to be divided by 2 pi F. 2 pi F divided by 2 pi F is just 1. So we end up with L on its own. Express it with the subject on the left and you get L equals XL over 2 pi F. My final formula just for this short video is going to be the transformer formula. VP over VS equals NP over NS. This is a formula that people find a little bit tricky to rearrange to try and find the value. So let's just have a brief look at this now. If we wanted to find, let's say, NP on its own, whatever we do to one side of the formula we must do to the other side to keep the balance. How can I eliminate NS? I need to get NP on its own. This is a division here, so let's do a multiplication. Let's multiply that side by NS. What we do to one side, we must do the same to the other. We multiply that side by NS. NS now cancels out, and we're left with NP on its own. Put it on the left. NP equals VP times NS over VS. Put the formula in again, let's work out a different value. VP over VS equals NP over NS. Let's find a value that's on the bottom, because this takes a little bit more working out. Let's say that we want to find VS on its own. I need to get VS to the top line of the formula, otherwise it remains as a fraction and we don't want that. We need to get this onto the top line. So let's start by getting rid of the VP. So if we divide this side by VP and this side by VP, then they'll cancel out. VP divided by VP is just 1. So we end up with 1 over VS equals NP divided by NS times VP. It's looking quite complicated. VS that we're trying to find is still on the bottom of the formula. We want it on the top. At this stage, I think it's better to take the rule that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So the easiest way to get that to the top is just to invert it, to turn it upside down. So if we turn that upside down, Vs over 1, which is just Vs, then we just need to turn this upside down. So put the Ns and the Vp on the top, and the Np on the bottom. So then Vs equals Ns times Vp divided by Np. Now I know there's a lot to take in there, but if you replay the video a few times, hopefully you will begin to understand how it works. Thank you.